Welcome to this presentation about modulation transfer functions. First, we need to talk about some mathematical methods uh, that are useful for uh, modulation transfer functions. Uh, the first of which is the transform. Uh, transforms are mathematical tools that uh, uh, take a function or a vector and converts it to another uh, domain or coordinate system uh, to make it uh, easier to work with and more useful. The type of transform we'll be using for uh, modulation transfer functions is the Fourier transform. Uh, so uh, the Fourier transforms ha has a lot of applications, uh, many of which are in uh, a lot of scientific fields. Uh, mo the most prominent are in physics and uh, engineering, uh, especially in uh, quantum mechanics and uh, a signal analysis. They are also used uh, uh, to analyze the heat equation and the, the equations to use the, the Fourier transforms are highlighted right here. Uh, an example on how to use these, these uh, formulas uh, would be to uh, let, let f of x be a time function. So it would be f of t and then g of alpha would be a frequency function. So uh, g of nu. And uh, so you can take f of x and transform it into the frequency domain and turn it into g of alpha with the, these two functions and vice versa. Next we need to talk about the Gaussian function uh, which uh, represents a probability distribution. Uh, this function is used in quantum mechanics to represent uh, uh, Wave probability density uh, it is also used uh, for Gaussian beams like lasers. Uh, the function you can see right here is a uh, form of the Gaussian. It's the typical form. Uh, the uh, graph below is how it usually looks like. So it just uh, goes from uh, near zero and peaks and then comes back to near zero. That is usually how it goes. And what's interesting about the Gaussian function is that the Fourier transform of a Gaussian is also a Gaussian. Now, there, uh, if you analyze it, it can be proven. Uh, below here, I have a link which uh, gives a, a mathematical proof that it is very, a fairly, uh, a fairly good one. Uh, I recommend that you go see that. Uh, I will also link it in the description. The reason I mention the Gaussian function is because of the points Pratt function, which is useful to finding the modulation transfer function. So a point spread function is uh, a representative of uh, the image of a point source after it passes through an optical system. And uh, its graph is shown on the right, which uh, uh, if you look back uh, to the graph of a Gaussian, is this is a Gaussian. Now, the reason we don't use uh, the point spread function is that it is tedious to work with due to convolution. Uh, so we take the Fourier transform of it and we get the optical transfer function, which is free of convolution. So uh, the optical transfer function is comprised of two parts, uh, the modulation transfer function and the phase transfer function. Uh, the phase transfer function uh, we will not be discussing in this video. We will be concentrating on the modulation transfer function. Now coming to our main topic, uh, the modulation transfer function. Uh, so the modulation transfer function is uh, the magnitude of the optical transfer function. So as we can see in this equation right here, uh, 
you can see that the modulation transfer function right here is uh, the magnitude of the uh, optical transfer function. So recapping, uh, we used the a Fourier transform on the uh, point spread function to get the optical transfer function. And then we used its magnitude and that is how we got the modulation transfer function. Now, uh, the modulation transfer function can be used to give a description of the images uh, of the imaging properties of an optical system. Uh, another way to find the modulation transfer function is through this equation uh, right here. But this equation only applies to uh, a near perfect image, which is highly unlikely in an experimental procedure but it gives an, es an estimate of what you can find. Now, uh, the modulation transfer function can be obtained experimentally. Uh, some methods require some extra calculation. Uh, I won't be going into how to find it experimentally. Uh, uh, I've linked uh, two YouTube videos. The first is a lab experiment on how to find it. Uh, the second video right here is how uh, camera manufacturers uh, and camera testers uh, look uh, for uh, find, try to find the uh, modulation transfer functions for uh, their products. On uh, uh, the right, uh, you have the uh, uh, plot of a modulation transfer function for a telescope. Uh, the black line is for a perfect telescope and the red line is for a typical telescope. Uh, I will go into more details on the next slide. Okay, so if we look back at the same curve right here, as I mentioned, the black, uh, the black line here is uh, for a perfect telescope. Uh, the red line is for a typical telescope or just any telescope, it, it, it won't be perfect. So uh, the scales here are, uh, for the vertical scale, it's uh, straws, uh, the straw number, and the horizontal scale is uh, the resolution. Now, uh, this is typically the scale used for telescopes. Uh, other imaging systems, such as cameras, uh, 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 the experimenters would pre prefer to use uh, uh, contrast on the vertical line. So here is contrast. And on the horizontal, uh, they would use uh, the the uh, spatial frequencies. So if we look at the bottom picture, it demonstrates uh, how this works for a contrast versus spatial frequency. So if you can see the spatial frequency at the, at the top here is uh, low, so the bars are more spaced out and you can see that the contrast is high. So this would be in this area right here. And it would concur with the, with the telescope. This, it, 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 uh, the systems have uh, similar properties when it comes to optical systems. Uh, they mostly are similar on the graph. So when you go down here, uh, you can see that uh, the spatial frequency gets higher because you have more bars per area, uh, uh, per, uh, per distance. And if you can see the bottom half of this scale, you can see that the contrast goes down between the whites and the blacks right here. And this would amount to some point around here in the graph. And when you get the when your spatial frequency gets really high, like in this section right here, it has a lot of lines per uh, per uh, 
distance. And you can see the below picture is just gray. So this is where you almost can resolve uh, blacks from whites. So this would be around here, around this point where you, re you cannot resolve uh, the difference between uh, the black lines and the white lines. Finally, I would like to thank you for watching this presentation. Uh, all the links that I showed in the presentation will be in the description. Uh, if you would like to learn more about uh, modulation transfer functions and optical systems, there are many good online sources and books. Uh, I, I will also link the, uh, the article from uh, Telescope Optics, uh, which I use mostly for this presentation, uh, also in the description. Thank you.